Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing the very cheerful deathbed tag. So this was created by Jason from Old Blues Chapter and Verse, and Lukash from Totally Pretentious. I was not really tagged, but kind of tagged by Jay Shea. Uh, he uh, basically tagged anybody who's mortal, and I think I am mortal. Let me turn my little light on, it doesn't make much difference, mind. Oh yeah, let me know if my videos are like too dark, because I do have my proper big light, and obviously it's the winter, so there's not much light on me. But also, it's a lot of effort to get it back out each time. Whereas there's a little lamp over there I can just turn on. Anyway, forget about all that. You don't want to know about that. So this is tag. We've got eight questions. And uh, the last one asked me to tag some people. So, provided you're still lucid and conscious in the final days or weeks of your life, be it in hospice care or otherwise, question one. What music do you hope to listen to in the final days or weeks of your life? Okay, well for me, I think we would have Dreamies by Bill Holt. It's actually named after an Isaac Asimov short story, but um, it's this really beautiful piece of music. It's about 50 minutes long. Originally recorded in the 70s, the guy recorded it bit by bit on tape and like literally spliced bits of tape together. It took him two years to do it. He did things like he'd record an entire night of rainfall and then listen back to it all just to find the perfect 10 second clip or whatever. So, um, yeah, it's really cool. And originally, obviously, it was on vinyl, and so the two sides of the vinyl are two just complete tracks. Beautiful piece of music. I would also want to listen to Exodus by Bob Marley. I think that's what I listen to when I'm just feeling sad. Uh, and stuff like The Beatles, Abbey Road, Sgt. Peppers. Yeah, probably, probably that, I would say. And maybe Mozart's Requiem as well, if I felt a bit... <laughs> <laughs> a bit morbid, I don't know. Question two, what novel or novels do you hope to read in the final days or weeks of your life? I think for me it would probably mostly be rereads at that point. Um, I guess I wouldn't see much point in reading something new because for me when I read new stuff it kind of changes my perspective on things, changes my outlook on the world and when I'm on my deathbed, you know, I don't have much of a need to change my perspective. So I'd probably read some stuff. I'd probably read uh, the Dhammapada again. Um, I would read, I don't know, like, I guess I'd want to go for kind of happier stuff. So probably a lot of Terry Pratchett, maybe the Discworld books. Um, I'd probably read Shaking Hands with Death, actually, which Pratchett is it's an essay Pratchett wrote about him coming to terms with his own mortality. Although it's not a novel, it's a non-fiction thing. Um, in fact, so is the Dhammapada. So I, I, don't, I don't know whether I'd necessarily go for novels. I might be reading more non-fiction. Might even reread some of my own stuff, I guess. I don't know. I'm just looking up at my bookcase over there where I've started to sort through my books. So it's easier now for me to look at my bookcase and be like, oh, yes, that book is good. That book is good. That book is good. However, I don't know. It's a lot of like Bukowski and stuff. Maybe I would. I might read some of Bukowski's latest stuff when it was kind of him coming to terms with his mortality. Yeah, whatever, whatever I, whatever I fancy, I suppose. Question number three, what film or films do you hope to watch? Again, I think I would be going for stuff that I would see as comfort watches. So it would be like the American Pie movies. I used to watch those a lot when I was ill because um, I had some problems with like uh, my anxiety and also like my stomach and, and IBS and whatnot. So for about two years, I was convinced I was dying and I just used to watch a lot of, again, American Pie. I've been watching Snooker a lot recently just because it's hard to feel sad when you're watching that, I guess. Um, a lot of comedy stuff as well. Uh, I, I think, yeah, probably that. And maybe some stuff from my childhood, like stuff like Wayne's World and, yeah. Question number four. What static visual works of art do you hope to spend time with? My booktube sign? I don't know. Static visual work of art. I don't know. I honestly can't think of any. I'm not really an arty kind of person, you know. It probably would, again, be like things like that. And up there, uh, I have some art that I did. Let me go uh, freestyle with the camera, look. Uh, we have my little thing of Stonehenge up there, and then the one to the right of that, that is the one there. That is like my rough, well it's a rough map of the factory farming facility in my uh, novel, Meat. But I did it as like an abstract thing. I guess also, like, I don't know, like my tattoos and stuff, would that count? I spend some time with, with Wolfie over here. Question number five, what poem or poems do you hope to read? America, I've given you all and now I'm nothing. America, $2.27, January 17th, 1956. I can't stand my own mind. America, when will we end the human war? Go fuck yourself with your atom bomb. I don't feel good, don't bother me. I won't write my poems till I'm in my right mind. America, 
when will you look th yourself through the grave? America, why are your libraries full of tears? I'm sick of your insane demands. Why can't I go into a supermarket and buy what I need with my good looks? America, after all, it is you and I who are perfect and not the next world. Your machinery is too much for me. You made me want to be a saint. There must be some other way to settle this argument. And Burroughs is in Tangiers. I don't think he's coming back. It's sinister. America, are you being sinister or is this some form of practical joke? I'm trying to come to the point. I refuse to give up my obsession. America, stop pushing. I know what I'm doing. America, the plum blossoms are falling. America, I haven't read a newspaper for months. Every day somebody goes on trial for murder. America, I smoke marijuana every chance I get. I sit at my house for days on end and stare at the roses in the closet. Whenever I go to Chinatown, I get drunk but never get laid. My mind's made up. There's going to be trouble. You should have seen me reading Marx. America, I have mystical visions and cosmic vibrations. America, you don't really want to go to war. America, it's them bad Russians, them Russians, them Russians, them Chinamen, and them Russians, them Russians power mad, them Russians eat her alive, them makers work 16 hours a day, help. America, this is quite serious. America, this is the impression I get when I look at your television sets. America, is this correct? I better get right down to it. It's true. I'm not made to join the army or to turn ladies and precision parts factories. I'm nearsighted and psychopathic anyway. America, I'm putting my queer shoulder to the wheel. Missed out about half of that, but off the top of my head from memory, when I haven't thought about that for about three years, pretty good. Yeah, probably Ginsburg and Bukowski. Question six, is there a religious text or section of a religious text that you hope to read? I'm not at all religious, but I did mention the Dhammapada, that's I suppose a Buddhist text. Uh, the other thing actually um, that I haven't mentioned, I'd, I'd want to read Socrates' defense by Plato, because it's the, the defense that Socrates gives him, of himself when he kind of He's basically on trial for his life, and in the end, he kind of loses the trial, and he knows he's going to die, and the way he faces death, I think, was inspirational, you know? Question number seven. Is there another work of art, drama, dance, non-fiction, what have you, unrepresented in the previous categories, that you hope to encounter one last time? Well, yeah, I've covered non-fiction quite extensively, weirdly. Dance? Not really. I'm not really a dance kind of person. Um... Oh, when I looked at the questions before, I hadn't really formulated answers, but when I looked at them, for that one I thought I'd like to play one last open mic, you know? Even if it's in my on my deathbed and someone just gives me a guitar and I'm, you know, playing like, uh, always look on the bright side of life or something, you know? Question number eight. Tag a few booktubers whom you think will be open to considering such questions about their mortality. Well, I don't know who would be open to answering questions about their mortality. So... Um, I'm just going to pick out some people who recently left comments. I'm going to tag Bookish, Nicole Foti, Brad Proctor, Jason's Weird Reads, Savvy Reads Books, I, Nikki at I Read Past My Bedtime, uh, Linda Jo Martin, The Book Lady. I know she's not had a chance to create content recently. Uh, she's been van dwelling, but I believe she's coming back to the platform soon. Uh, Anthony Andrews, actually, I don't know if he's coming back, but uh, definitely if he's around and wants to do it. That Irish Bookworm. One book, one review, Vicka. Uh, Benjamin Ray Barnes, Graham Sillers reads books. And one more, lucky last person, Charles Heathcote. Well done, Charlie, you're the lucky one. So there we have it. That is what I made of the deathbed tag. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of my answers and... Uh I don't know, how soon you think I'm going to die? Why not? Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video, assuming that I don't pass away. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.